guys are hilarious. <laughs> oh man, it seems like it's gonna be one of those days. Um, the theme for today is this whole concept of focus. So ironically enough, yep. Um, I've been thinking about the idea of focus because I've realized that recently I'm having a really hard time focusing. There are just like so many things that grab my attention or need my attention or I think need my attention that it just seems like I'm just constantly being pulled or running or stopping in different directions. And so for today, the ask is very simple. The ask is to pretend that you have no life outside of this time. I know that's a big ask, super big ask, but I'm gonna pretend, we're all gonna pretend today that whatever just happened, doesn't matter. Wherever you're going next, doesn't matter. All we're gonna focus on right now is what it feels like to be in our bodies, with our breath, with each other, whether you're in person or whether you're online. And we're just gonna see how that goes today and see if that creates a bit of space so that we can focus. I've been noticing in my own life that I just need some time to settle down and then focus becomes a little clearer. So we're gonna see what happens if we do that as a practice today, okay? So we're gonna start, make sure both of your blocks are towards the upper outer corners of your mat. And then you're gonna come onto hands and knees. And if it feels like for any reason your knees or shins are sensitive, a blanket would be a great thing to place underneath your knees and shins. And then the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to find a parallel version of child's pose. So both shins are parallel, both tops of the feet are on the floor, and you're just going to push your butt back to your feet, walk your hands a little bit further forward, and then take a moment to just allow yourself to settle and breathe here. This will be our grounding position. And we'll start with this shape and we'll come back to this shape just at the very beginning of our practice. So I want you to just take three breaths here. And for these first three breaths, just observe what does it feel like to have your hands touching the floor beneath you? What does it feel like to have your shin bones pressing down into the floor? And what does it feel like to just breathe into your abdomen wherever you can? Great, let's inhale and come forward, hands and knees. Make sure your hands are directly underneath your shoulders, your knees are hip distance apart. Take a big breath in and lengthen from your butt to your crown. And as you exhale, draw your front ribs in and back. Now stay here, take a big breath in, press firmly down into your left hand, reach your right hand forward like you're trying to shake somebody's hand and you've got three breaths cycles here. So arm is parallel to the floor, your butt is still reaching back, your crown is still reaching forward. And we're seeing if we can draw that outer right hip back even as yep, we reach forward through that right hand. And after you've taken your three complete breaths, that right hand comes back down to the floor. And then you exhale and press back to child's pose. And you just notice what it feels like. Breathing here, noticing now if you can find a little bit more space in how you breathe into that low back. If you can find a little bit more space and how you just settle into this present moment. Next in breath, let's come forward, hands and knees, tabletop position once again. Hands are directly underneath your shoulders. And then exhale, draw the front ribs in and back. And inhale, send your left hand forward like you're trying to shake someone's hand. And this time I want you to see if you can reach forward through that left pinky finger as you reach back through the outer left hip. Continue to press down into that right hand and reach your crown forward as though you're creating one straight line from your butt to your head. And next exhale, after you've taken three breaths, that left hand comes down and you press back to child's pose. And you'll just take a moment to pause and you'll take a moment to breathe. And you're just noticing what it feels like just in this moment, just in this breath. Awesome sauce. Let's go ahead and inhale back up, hands and knees. Take a moment to inhale and take a moment to exhale. Now you're gonna go ahead and slide your right leg long and back, tuck the toes under and take a moment to pause here. Squeeze your happy little tukas, draw your front ribs in and back and press the floor away and then just float that right leg parallel to the floor. Lengthen your tailbone back. Next in breath, reach your left arm forward. 
And you've got three breath cycles here. Keep drawing that outer left hip down to the floor. Keep hugging your front ribs into your back body. Yep, and more than you think you can, press down into that right hand. After you've taken three breaths, lower that left hand, lower that right knee, press back to child's pose, and just notice what the breath feels like right here, right now. It's very strange how that first movement actually seems a lot harder than one would anticipate, but it does help us ground. Inhale, come forward, hands and knees, and we'll try the other side. Before we go any further though, make sure hands are underneath your shoulders. Step your left leg back, straighten the leg long. Hug all the muscles around the bone and then float that left leg parallel to the floor. As you're here, keep lifting faster through that inner left thigh. Yep, push through your left hand and reach your right hand forward like you're trying to shake someone's hand. And again, try to find space from that outer right hip pulling back, outer right hand going forward, inner left thigh lifting and front ribs pulling in and back. At the end of your next or third exhalation, you'll lower that right hand down, lower the left knee down, press back to Balasana, child's pose. Now we're gonna start to work a little bit in this shape. Let's all walk our hands forward about shoulder distance apart. Press down and forward on your hands, lifting up through the inner armpits. And for these three breaths, I want you to see if you can lift up through your armpits, breathe wide across your upper back so it feels like the shoulder blades are wrapping down, and then see if you can press your bum back a little bit more, breathing into that low back. Yep, I feel okay with the legs, great. Next in-breath, come forward, hands and knees. As you exhale, curl the toes under, drop your belly, take a big breath in here, and then exhale, hips up towards the sky, downward facing dog, keep your knees bent for this first one. And as you're here, you might take a moment to continue to lift up through your happy inner armpits. With our knees super bent, lift your hips up and away. And then let's start to spin both heels over to the left. Keep lifting through your left inner armpit a lot. Push your right hand down and forward and say hello to your outer right hip, taking a deeper breath. Nice job. Next inhale, come back through center. As you exhale, the heels go over to the right. Lift up through that inner right armpit even more. Push down and forward with that left hand and breathe into the whole outside edge of the left side body. Nice job, guys. Next inhale, come back through center. As you exhale, lower the knees down to the mat. Inhale, find a cow shape. Exhale, press the floor away, round through the spine, cat shape. You've got three more just like these. And as we continue to move, your impetus is just on paying attention to the breath, your inhales and your exhales. You're paying attention to what it feels like to be embodied in your experience, however that may look. And after you've taken this third round of cats, you'll take whatever organic movement feels better to you. So that might be a twist. That might be a little bit of a barrel roll. You might hang out in child pose. You might find yourself doing something else. But the ask is to just be connected to what's happening in this moment. Awesome sauce. And you have three more breaths doing whatever the heck you happen to be doing. So I encourage you to visit the other side if you've done something asymmetrical. Great, awesome. And then let's go ahead and find ourselves in a neutral tabletop position. Curl both sets of toes under, inhale, lift your gaze. As you exhale, hips and hip, hips lift up and back, downward facing dog. Great, inhale, curl your spine forward into plank pose. Exhale, bend your knees, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. You got three of those. Inhale, roll from your tailbone to your crown, articulating through the vertebra, yep. Exhale, bend the knees, scoop the belly, drawing it in and up, lifting the hips up and back. Yep, and last time, inhale, coming forward into fallen kasana, plank pose. And exhale, downward facing dog. Great, this next one we're gonna hold. So let's go ahead and take a big breath in. As you exhale, roll forward into Fallen Kasana Plank Pose. Take a moment to pause here. Push down through your hands, lift up through your inner thighs and see if you can reach your crown forward, yep, and your tailbone back. 
As you exhale, you'll slowly lower through a chaturanga or push-up position and inhale through cobra or up dog, whatever's gonna work best for you. Yep. And then you'll exhale and make your way back to downward facing dog. Three steady breaths. And as you're here, I want you to first focus on what does your breath sound like? Is it smooth? Is it consistent? Is the inhale and the exhale the same length? Awesome sauce. Inhale, raise to the balls of your feet. As you exhale, bend the knees, empty the breath completely and step to the top of your space. Nice work. Once you get there, separate your feet about hip distance apart or wider, depending. And then you'll inhale, halfway lift, heart and sternum reach forward. And exhale, scoop the belly fold all the way back in. And you've got two more just like that. And you're just focusing on the breath. What does it feel like to be in your body, in your life? Exhale, folding all the way in. Last time, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold all the way in. Nice job. Bend your knees. Go ahead and plant your palms and step back to downward facing dog pose. Nice work, guys. Pushing down and forward through the hands. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, draw that right knee forward. Plant the right foot between your hands and take three breaths here. Maybe hands come to blocks, maybe they don't, but let's keep reaching that outer right hip back. Let's keep lifting through that inner left thigh and see if that heart and sternum can come forward to create space in the chest. On your next exhale, plant your palms, step back, downward facing dog pose, pause. Nice job. Other side, inhale, sweep left leg up and back. As you exhale, knee to nose, quietly step your left foot between your hands. Hands can come to blocks or stay on the floor, but you've got three breaths here. Keep reaching the heart and sternum forward. Keep lifting that back thigh away from the floor and drawing that outer left hip in and back. And on your third exhalation, hands will come back down to the mat and press yourself back to downward facing dog. Awesome sauce. Option to stay right here. Otherwise, inhale, come forward into plank pose, fallen kasana. Exhale through chataranga dandasana. Inhale to your up dog or cobra. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Three steady breaths. This time, pay attention to how the breath Feels. Where do you notice it in the body? Is it in the throat? Do you experience it in the abdomen? Can you continue to lift up through those inner armpits and press the floor away? Yeah, there you go. As you find more space, nice work. Adding on, lift your heels up and away from the floor. Slide both heels over towards the left. Keep lifting through your inner left armpit and push that right hand even further forward. Notice what it feels like now. Inhale, come back through center and exhale, take the heels back over to the right. Lift through that inner right armpit, push down and forward through that left. Nice job. Inhale, come back through center. Awesome sauce. Exhale, bend both knees at the end of the exhalation, step or float top of space. Nice job. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold all the way in. Awesome sauce. Inhale, bend your knees, sit your butt super duper low, Uttanasana, chair pose. Awesome, and we've got three steady breath cycles here. And all you're doing is you're breathing and you're sitting. We're pushing down through the big toe mounds of our feet. We're reaching up through our fingers and we're hugging our front ribs into our back body and lifting our heart up. You've got one more breath cycle here. Next exhale, stand up, reach up, look up, hooray. And inhale, exhale, arms open out to the side. All right, we're gonna add on. Inhale, circle, sweep our arms up and overhead. Exhale, fold forward at our hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your palms, step your right leg long and back. Take a nice steady breath in here. On your next exhale, step back, downward facing dog. Awesome sauce. Inhale here, exhale here. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. And then exhale, step that left leg forward. So same lunge position. 
Inhale, gaze forward. Exhale, step forward. Uttanasana, forward fold. Nice job. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, root to rise. Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. And exhale, hands through heart center. Adding on. Inhale, circle, sweep the arms up and overhead. Exhale, hinge at your hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. Nice job. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees, plant your palms, step your left leg long and back. Take a complete breath cycle here. As you exhale, you'll plant the hands and step back, downward facing dog. Big breath cycle in, big breath out. Next inhalation, you'll sweep that same leg up and back. So the right leg will sweep up and back. Exhale, step the right leg forward. Take a big breath in. Exhale, step the left foot to meet the right. Awesome sauce, slight variation. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, bend your knees, sit your pelvis low, utka. Asana, chair pose. Three breaths here. Three steady breaths. The only thing that matters is right now. Can you reach up through your pinky fingers like we did in hands and knees? Can you draw those front ribs in and back? And then find a little bit more lift. Yep. On your next in breath, stand up, reach up, look up, and exhale, hands open out to the side. Let your eyes soften or close for a moment and take a breath. Where are you now? What do you notice in terms of things that are alive and alert within you? How does the body feel? How does the breath feel? Okay, we're gonna add on. This is up to you. Some of you will plant a block in between your inner thighs. Some of you will just walk your feet together. You choose what works for you. From here, you'll inhale and sweep your arms up and overhead. Take a moment to pause, clasp your hands. Let's push down through our big toe mounds and our inner heels. Reach up through your arms. As you exhale, take both hands up and over to your left. Now, as we go over to the left, the tendency is for that outer left hip to come, or rather outer right hip to go back. So we want to draw it forward. And then we want to draw that outer left hip or outer left shoulder, sorry, forward. Yep. And then you're just going to breathe. Next inhale, you'll come back up through center. Exhale, open the arms out and just notice what you notice between the sides. And then we'll go into that the other side. So inhale, arms sweep up and overhead. Grab your hands and exhale, hands over to the right. And again, we wanna push in the inner edges of our feet. We wanna make sure that our right shoulder is coming forward. Yep, our outer left hip is coming forward and you're squeezing the block, drawing the pelvis in and up. Nice job. Next inhalation, come up through center. As you exhale, arms open out. Nice job. If you use that block, you might remove it. If you had no block, no worries. From there, let's add on. Inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead. Exhale, hinge at your hips, forward fold, Uttanasana. Nice work. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. As you exhale, bend your knees. Plant your palms, step back, downward facing dog pose. Awesome sauce. Inhale if you'd like, coming forward into plank pose. And then exhaling through Chaturanga Dandasana as needed. Inhale to up dog or cobra. And exhale, downward facing dog. Three steady breaths. What is happening right here, right now? This is the only thing that matters. How is the breath? What does it feel like to push into the floor? How do the clothes feel against your body? All right, let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Awesome sauce, step the back foot in, spin it down for warrior one. And then inhale, let's come up for Virbha, Sadrasana one, warrior one. And you got three breaths to just become stable in that shape. And so as you're becoming stable in your warrior one, I want you to pay particular attention to what's happening in that front foot, front knee. Now, as crazy as this is gonna sound, we're gonna step forward, taking that left leg up and around for eagle pose, Garudasana. 
So you'll just step and you'll cross. The arms can do the same thing if you'd like. And you've just got three breath cycles here. Left arm under, right arm on top. Yep, thank you, Roberta. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. You're hugging those outer elbows in. You're lifting the elbows in line with the shoulders and you're bending into that right knee as best as you can. Now, keeping the arms bound, take a big breath in. As you exhale confidently, we will step back to warrior one. So the arms stay in eagle. You step that left leg back, awesome sauce, nice control. And after you've landed and you're stable, you'll inhale, you'll unwind your arms, you'll extend them up towards the sky. And as we're here for these last few breath cycles, reach up through the ribs, reach up through the arms and draw that outer right hip back as you lift through that inner left thigh. Nice job. Exhale, hands come down to the floor. Step yourself back to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Sanasana, and just take a moment to pause. There's nothing you have to do other than breathe. There's nothing you have to do other than just be connected to what's happening in your body in this moment. Nice job. Can you hear your breath? Can it be steady? Let's go on to the next side. Inhale, lift that left leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step your foot between your hands. Spin your right foot down by stepping it forward first. And then when you're stable, you'll inhale and come up for Virbha Padrasana 1. And just as we did in the first pose or first side, you've got three breaths. How do you find stability here for you? What small little changes need to happen? And then we'll start to draw more of our attention to that front leg, really pushing into that left foot. And then when you're ready, you'll confidently step that right foot forward, wrap the right thigh over the right arm under, Garudasana, eagle pose. And this side is its own unique animals, pressing those outer elbows in, lifting the elbows in line with the shoulders, the heart lifts, the breath deepens. Nice work, guys. The end of your next exhalation, you'll take a big breath in. As you exhale, unwind the legs, step that right leg long and back, finding Virbhadrasana one once again. And once you find yourself there, you take a moment to stabilize. Once you feel stable, you'll inhale and unwind those arms. And once you're there, we've again got all the action of pressing down into that back foot. We're reaching up through the right arm. We're wrapping the left ribs back, the left hip back. Nice job, inhale and exhale, plant the palm, step yourself back, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. This time you might choose to cycle through an up dog or cobra, you might choose to say, yep, nope, not for me. And that is a-okay, but we're paying attention to what feels appropriate to us. Yep, yeah. and we're just pausing and we're breathing and we're letting that be sufficient. We're letting that be sufficient. Okay, so mama, you push me in the knee, keep me out. Does that feel okay on your back? Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. All right. So from downward facing dog, we're gonna go ahead and make our way into the next series of shapes, okay? So inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, step that right foot quietly between your hands. Awesome sauce. Step that back foot in a bit, spin it down for warrior two, but pause. I encourage you to bring the block underneath your right hand. It could be inside or outside your front leg. It's totally up to you. Bring your left hand to your left hip and you're gonna start to straighten and straighten that front leg and open into Utita Trikonasana, triangle pose. And as we go into triangle pose, the first step is just to find our feet. So we're gonna press onto the knife edge of that back foot. We're gonna press into the big toe mound of that front foot. Engage that front kneecap and then see if we can find more length. Yep, on that underside body on the right and wrap the left ribs underneath. You're good, Roberta. Nice job. On your next exhale, you'll see if you can draw the abdomen in a little bit more. Inhale, find more length on the right ear so it's long. Yep. And then exhale, frame the front foot coming to a low lunge. Go ahead and step yourself back, downward facing dog. And we'll pause and we'll breathe. And you just notice, how's the breath? How's the body? When we allow ourselves the opportunity to stop, to pause, to check in, we find out that in many ways we're actually okay, even when things seem like they're completely freaking falling apart. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. 
Awesome. Step that back foot in, spin it down for warrior two leg. Take a moment to pause. Hand comes to block on that left side, either inside or outside edge of that front foot. Right hand comes to right hip. You'll start to straighten your front leg long and roll your ribs over to the left. And just as we did before, first few moments are spent grounding into the pose. So you're gonna press that outer right pinky toe into the floor. Press down into your left big toe and continue to pull that left kneecap up. And then from there, find how you can find space on the underside, the left ribs. Nice job. On your next exhale, engage the belly a little bit more. As you inhale, lift that left ear away from the mat, just a smidge, yep. On your next exhale, you'll lower the hands coming to a low lunge. Step yourself back to downward facing dog. Awesome sauce. Inhale, let's come forward into plank pose, fallen kasana. Exhale for three breaths here. And we're just pausing and we're breathing. Every exhale engages that core a little bit more, drawing it in and up. Every inhale finds length from our tail to our crown. After your third exhalation, you can either cycle through an up dog or cobra, press back to downward facing dog, or take a few breaths in child's pose. But you're paying attention to what enables you to breathe. Most of the things that keep us hurried in life are not allowing us to breathe. They're not allowing us to check in. And so we're just pausing and we're breathing and we're checking in. Awesome. We have three more breaths in whatever shape you're in. So if you're hanging out in down dog, you might want to try a child's pose. If you're hanging out in child's pose, you might want to try a down dog. It's totally up to you. So we got three more breath cycles. Awesome sauce. We're gonna make our way to downward facing dog. So wherever you happen to be, you'll make your way back to that. Great. And we'll take a big breath in down dog and a big breath out. Inhale, raise to the balls of your feet. As you exhale, bend the knees, empty the belly, step or float top of space. Nice job. Once you get there, go ahead and separate your feet about hip distance apart. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, sit to Utkatasana, chair pose. Now in this chair pose, if you can, let's go ahead and interlace our hands over our head. So steepling the fingers and sending them up, or you could send the heels of the hands up. But as we're here, I want you to imagine that you are actually pulling your pinky fingers up to lift up through those inner armpits. And as you're doing all that, you're drawing your front ribs in to support that back body and lifting the sternum and heart just a bit. Nice job. And then if that wasn't enough, I want you to push down through the big toes and hug those outer hips in and think of sliding your heels back. It's so strange, but it engages the backs of the legs. Next in breath, stand up, look up, reach up. And then exhale, hands through heart center. Let the eyes soften or close and take a moment to check in. How is the breath? How are you? How is the body? How are you? We are so much more than any of the things that are ever happening in our external environment. And sometimes we just need to take a moment to pause to see that. All right. We'll repeat this one more time. If you'd like, you slide that block between your inner upper thighs or maybe you just walk your feet together. And for this variation, let's sweep both arms up and overhead. I want you to grab your right wrist with your left hand. Root down through your right foot a crap ton. Inhale, lift up through that right arm and exhale a little side bend to the left. Now, as we go to the left this side, yep, we still wanna make sure that that outer right hip is coming forward. Yep, and then the outer left shoulder blade is coming forward. And then see if you can rotate your rib cage, your chest up to the sky just a bit. Yep, as you draw the low belly in. Nice work. Next inhalation, come up through center. Exhale, open the arms out and just notice what that feels like. Maybe roll the shoulders if you need to. And then when we're ready to try the other side, you'll inhale and sweep your arms up and overhead. Grab your left wrist. Take a big breath in, lengthen up through the left side body, root down through the left foot, and then exhale, little side bend over to the right. And again, as we go over to the right, 
We want to make sure that we are drawing our hips parallel, drawing that outer right shoulder blade forward and the heart lifts through the gates of our arms, push down through the big toe mound of that left foot even more. Inhale, come up through center and exhale, open the arms out. Nice work. Circle the shoulders if you need to. And then when you feel complete with that, take that block out from between your thighs and plant it in the center of your mat. I encourage you to put it on its first, sorry, its highest or its second setting, but it's directly underneath your face. All right, cool. And then we'll take a big breath in. Hands will come to our hips and we're gonna imagine that we're wearing mom jeans and your hands are gonna slide down. I don't know why we say this, but, and we wanna make sure our feet are at least hip distance apart. You're gonna push your mom jeans down. You're gonna push your hips forward. You're gonna push down into the big toe edges of your feet, hug those shoulder blades together on your back and let the heart and sternum lift. You might hug the elbows towards each other even more and start to take your gaze up along the wall and maybe even back behind you. But you're pushing down through the big toe mounds. You're sliding your hands into your mom jean pockets and you're seeing if the heart can lift. Nice job. To come out of this, the belly hugs to the spine. The spine pushes back behind you and you come all the way up, finding length. From here, release the hands. Great, and happy days. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Sit low, ooh, kakasana. <laughs> and we're gonna keep pushing on those outside edges of the feet. You're gonna hug your front ribs in and back and reach the sternum up. Soften in the inner armpits and lift up through those inner pinky fingers. Nice job. Next exhale, hinge at the hips, forward fold. Great. Now that block should theoretically be underneath your face. Bring your right hand to your butt, sacrum area. Bring that left hand to that block. Great, inhale, lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Now I want you to push down into that block like crazy until you feel your shoulders engage. Keep pushing into that left hand and you'll start to rotate just your rib cage, your chest, all that fun stuff over to the right. Your sacrum is lengthening back, your crown is reaching forward and you're just pushing, 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 push, 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 pushing down through that left hand. There we go to find the shoulder blade engaged on the back and the rotation through the ribs. Yeah, no, if you're like straight pointing, you're good. No worries. <laughs> on your next in-breath, come back through center. As you exhale, lower that right hand to the block. Bring the left hand to the sacrum, to the hip. Lengthen the spine first. So butt and crown are in opposite directions. And then exhale, start to push into that right hand a lot until the shoulder blade, the armpit lifts. And then you'll rotate as far as you can go towards the left and we're just really isolating this. So as we're rotating, we're seeing if our hips can stay out of it. We're just rotating through the ribs and through the chest. Yep. On your next in breath, find more length. Uh-huh. As you exhale, draw the front ribs in and back and then we'll just slowly come out of this, inhaling back through center, remove that block and then step back to downward facing dog. And then you've just got three breaths. Notice what you notice. How's the breath? How's the body? How did that twist feel? How does the body feel? All right. Let's go ahead and add on. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that right foot between your hands. Awesome sauce. Spin that back foot down for warrior one. And then inhale, come up for Virabhadrasana one, warrior one. And we're just gonna pause. Again, you got three breath cycles. The first important thing is to find your foundation. So we wanna make sure we're pushing into the knife edge of that back foot. We wanna make sure we're lifting and toning through that inner left thigh. And that we're finding lift through the pinky fingers to lift through the inner armpits. Awesome sauce. Next in breath, straighten your front leg long. As you exhale, let's step that back foot in just a smidge. Great, inhale here. Next, exhale, hinge forward, out and down, bringing fingers to blocks or floor, whatever works best for you. Some of you will stay right here with your hands directly underneath your shoulders and you'll just inhale and lift your spine parallel to the floor and then exhale and fold into your front shin bone. Some of you will continue forward with me. So you'll inhale and lift halfway. As you exhale, step that left block to the inside edge of your right foot. 
You might bring that right hand back to your sacrum, just as we had before. And then repeating all those things. So lift your spine parallel to the floor. Draw the front ribs in and back and then push down into that left hand a lot to rotate the right shoulder to the right. And then you might float the right arm up, keeping the pelvis exactly as it is. Yeah, nice job. And we're just noticing, can we then find that heart back bending opening shape by reaching the sternum forward and then rotating through the ribs? Nice work. On your next in breath, Find a little bit more length as you exhale, lower that hand, bend the front knee and step back, downward facing dog and just take a moment to pause, take a moment to breathe. You might choose to hang out here, happy days. You might choose to cycle through an up dog or a cobra if that works for you. Yep, and you're just connected. What's happening right here, right now? your breath, the people practicing with you, what's going on? I put the block back for me. Okay, all right, let's try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, quietly step that foot between your hands. Pause, once you get there, step the back foot in and spin it down for warrior one, and then inhale, we'll bring ourselves up for virba and drasana one. And just as we did before, find your shape. How does it feel? How does the pelvis feel? Where can you lengthen that tailbone down to draw the low belly in and up and find more extension through the upper spine? As you're ready, we'll take a big breath in. Exhale, straighten that front leg long. Step the back foot in a smidge. Awesome. Inhale, lift up through the arms and exhale, hinge with the hips, bringing hands down to blocks or floor underneath your shoulders. Again, Make sure hands are directly underneath your shoulders. And some of you will just inhale and halfway lift here and then exhale and fold into that shin and you'll hang out here as you'd like. Some of you will continue forward and will inhale and halfway lift. You'll walk that block on the right side into the inside edge of your left foot. You'll keep that spine vertical or rather parallel to the floor and then draw the left hand to the sacrum. And then just as we did before, push down through that right hand, lengthen your tuppus back, lengthen your crown forward, hug those front ribs in and back to support the low back. And then you might rotate towards the left, but we wanna keep hugging front ribs into back body, yep. And then you'll stay and some of you will breathe and some of you will extend that top arm, left arm up. And as we're doing this, we wanna make sure that we're rotating from the ribs. So we're pushing down through that right hand, letting the right ribs wrap under the left ribs wrap up and then lifting on that inner right ear away from the floor. Nice job. On your next exhale, lower that hand to the mat. Come to a low lunge, step back, downward facing dog. We're gonna meet in child's pose. So however you choose to get there is all up to you. So we're gonna meet in child's pose. <laughs> are we okay? <laughs> okay. You guys are like, we're tired. <laughs> Three breaths. Notice what you notice. How's the body? How's the breath? How is this moment? Awesome sauce. All right. Let's go ahead and come forward, forearms and forearms, forearms and knees. So I was like, what is the other body part? Forearms and something. Forearms <laughs> and four legs. I know, wouldn't that be amazing? It's like suddenly, well, we have more than four legs in here. So technically we could do that. Oh, okay, never mind. Oh yeah, you're right, aren't you? Okay. And then you're gonna just take some cats and cows here in that. And if you're resting in child's pose, you stay there as long as you like. And you just breathe wherever the breath feels like it needs to go for you. And so those that are on forearms and four, four legs, um, you're continuing to just take those cats and cows. And the next time you round into that happy little cat shape, you're gonna pause there. Make sure your shoulders are directly over your elbows. The inner armpits are lifting. Slide your right leg long and back. Tuck the toes under, squeeze your tuchus. Keep pushing down through the forearms and then slide your left leg back to meet it. 
lifting through those inner thighs, lifting through the inner elbows. You can stay here in forearm plank. You might choose to bend your knees and walk your feet forward towards your face, but you're pausing and you're breathing wherever you are. Sorry, walk your feet towards your face if you're doing that. Yep. And we're just lifting and we're breathing. Is that okay, Jim? Okay. And we're just pausing and we're breathing and we're pausing and we're breathing. And once you've had enough of whichever shape you've been in, you're going to lower down and you'll meet your way back into child's pose. Okay. So standing. I want you to think of sticking your butt up. Uh-huh. Push down into the floor even more and lift up through your armpits for me. Yep. Does that feel okay? Okay. So we need to have you wrap this a little bit more so that when you go up and form, you can stay there. Awesome sauce. All right. From child's pose, let's go ahead and come forward. Um, well, I wanted to go to sphinx pose, but mama to be, you might need to adjust this. What, what? Yes, so let's have you do camel leg stuff while they do sphinx. So everyone else, let's go ahead and come forward to sphinx. And I want you to separate your feet about hip distance apart, just in case if you need another one. And we're gonna just pause here. I want you to press down into the pinky toe edges of your feet, push down into your big toe edges of your feet, lengthen your tailbone back and pull your heart and sternum forward. And some of you will stay right here. Some of you will take your left hand over to your right hand. You'll bend your right knee. You'll reach back and grab that right foot with your right hand and you'll draw your right heel towards your face. And you'll keep pushing down through that left hand, lifting up through your inner left armpit. And see if you can square your shoulders towards the top of your space. Push down through that left forearm a lot so your sh left shoulder comes away from the floor. There you go. And then very gently, you'll release that right leg and you'll switch sides. So potentially right hand comes to left hand, bend left knee. Keep pressing on to the pinky toe edge of that right foot. And you're lifting up through the inner right armpit. Yep. And we're just pausing and we're breathing. Awesome sauce. And then very gently, you'll release that. Okay. People on their bellies, you will then bring your hands alongside your hips, palms face up. Okay, lengthen your tailbone back, draw the shoulder blades onto your back. And when you're ready, you'll inhale, lift everything up and away from the floor. Yep, keep hugging those shoulder blades onto the back, lifting up through the inner thighs. Nice work. And you've just got three breath cycles here, lifting through the inner thighs. The end of your third exhalation. Nice work. You'll gently lower down. That's enough where we're going next. Awesome. Now you have the option of repeating any of those previous steps. So maybe you go back to Ardha Bikasana, maybe you go back to Shalambhasana, or maybe you want to do Dhanurasana. So if you're going to do Dhanurasana, you'll bend both knees. You'll reach around and grab the outside edges of both feet. Mama to be um, Ustrasana works well. Um, you can also do baby Chapasana if you want. Yeah, because then you can still get the quad stretch too. Um, and so you're just going to pause and you're going to breathe and you're pausing and you're breathing. And after you've taken your three breaths, doing whatever shape you're doing, you will gently release. And then you just take a moment to pause, bring an ear to the mat, allow yourself to just pause and breathe. And as you're here, I want you to notice where the breath is alive and alert in the body. Do you feel the heart pounding into the chest, the chest pressing into the floor? Do you feel the abdomen moving into the floor, moving into the low back? And then when you're ready, we'll all make our way onto our backs. So you might just flip yourselves over like happy little pancakes. You might roll like sausages. You might do God knows what. Um, but we're just gonna flip over onto our backs. You know what? I am too. Like, <laughs> there's a seat turn around. There we go. All right. 
And when you find yourself on your back, some of you will just pull your knees to your chest and hang out here. Some of you will set up to do bridge pose. So you're gonna choose what feels best to you based upon this moment. So those that are gonna go for bridge, let's make sure our hands are alongside our hips, our feet are hip distance apart. See if you can wrap those shoulder blades onto the floor and then you'll inhale, push down through your feet, lift your hips high. Once your hips are high, you might grab the outer edges of the mat. You might interlace the hands underneath you. You might robot the arms or do none of the above. But you've got three breath cycles here. And what we're doing is we're pushing into the inner edges of our feet. We're hugging those inner thighs towards each other and then down. And as best as you can, it's like you're trying to get your hip points to kiss the ceiling. As you wrap the outer shoulders onto the floor, you lift your sternum to your chest, or rather sternum to your chin. Draw your chin away from your sternum and just push down into the center of your head. And that was a crap ton of things to do. And the only way you can do them is if you're fully present in this moment. And then you're just noticing the breath. What does it feel like in this moment? After you take this next exhalation, let's go ahead and release. Then we'll come and we'll just take a moment to pause. And we'll take a moment to pause. And we'll take a moment to pause. And you've just got three breaths, three, three, steady, steady breaths. And I want you to just notice how you feel. What's alive and alert and present for you. Awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and walk our feet hip distance apart. Slide your left leg forward. Hug your right knee in towards your chest. From here, you might just move around a little bit right to left. You might completely be still. Okay, and then most of us hopefully have a strap somewhere easily accessible. I'm sorry, people at home, I can't magically bring you one. But oh, I got it for you, Steve, it's next to you. You'll go ahead and grab your strap and loop it around the ball of your right foot and send your foot up towards the sky. We haven't done this one a lot, but the request last week was to pay attention to low back stuff. And I forgot when Roberta asked me this morning, do you need a strap? I was like, no, but well, you did, you did. I'm very sorry. Okay, so we're gonna draw that outer right hip back. We're going to push down through the inner left thigh, left heel, left calf, and you're reaching that right heel up as you push into the big toe mound. And you're pulling down with that strap, but I encourage you to notice where you can soften in your shoulder. Where we can find a little bit more space in that outer right hip. Is that feel okay? Okay, so now I want you to move down here and continue to draw this out. Is there space here for baby? Or do you need to go a little bit more to the right? Okay. Okay. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're pausing. Awesome. So let's keep that left leg active. On your next in breath, just see where you can soften. And on your exhale, see what you can let go of. So we've got about two to three more breath cycles here. I like this shape, it's very relaxing. You're just seeing what's happening. At the end of your next exhalation, we'll go ahead and release the strap, draw that right knee in towards your chest. And then you'll gently release the right leg down to meet its friend. See if you notice anything between the sides, how the body is, how you are. And then when we're ready, we'll try the other side. So this time the left leg looks like it'll come in towards our chest. And you just take a moment to be there. If that means you're fidgeting around, moving your ankles, whatever you're doing, you're doing. And then as we feel ready, we'll strap up the ball of that left foot. And then we'll send the left foot up towards the sky. And just as we did on the first side, 
So our first impetus is always to that leg that's on the floor, ironically enough. So we wanna make sure that we're pushing down into that calf, down into that inner thigh. And then as best as we can, we draw that outer left hip away. That's okay, okay with it. And then we're seeing if we can soften any tension around our jaw. If we can just take slow, steady, smooth breaths as we reach up through that left heel, press up through that left big toe mound. Okay, so we're just pausing and we're breathing. Okay, 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 okay. So we wanna make sure that when we do this for you, we don't wanna over, we don't wanna destabilize things. So as long as it feels good, good. Too much flexibility, not so good. Okay, okay. So we're just pausing and we're breathing. And we're seeing what's going on. Seeing what's going on. Yeah. Good job, guys. We've got two more breath cycles here. And you're staying with that breath. So as we start to slow down, we still want to stay connected to that breath. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently release. Bring that knee into your chest, saying bye-bye to that strap. And then you'll release that left leg long to meet its mate. And you'll take a moment to just pause and see how that feels. Okay, moving on. Let's try entering it this way. Cross your right ankle over your left thigh. Right ankle over left thigh, yep. Then bend that left knee until the left heel comes to your butt. And then you might thread your hands through the holes of your leg to grab the back of that left thigh, front of your left shin. Keep pressing the right outer ankle against the top of that left thigh. And you're just pausing and you're breathing. Some of you will be still here. Some of you will wanna fidget or move around, but you're responding based upon active choice. And you're responding based upon the present information that's right here, right now. No expectations, no wishing we'd done it differently. All right, we've got two more breath cycles here. See if you can soften any tension around your shoulders and soften any tension around your face. Okay, awesome. The end of your next exhale. Let's go ahead and release our hands. And then we'll go ahead and switch sides. So you'll extend the legs long. You'll cross the left ankle over the right thigh, flexing through that foot and then bending the knees in, holding them in. And then you might interlace hands through the whole of the leg, grabbing the back of the thigh or the front of the shin. And you've just got three breath cycles here. And again, you might be still, you might find movement. You might find that if you lift that right shin parallel-ish to the floor, there's one sensation. If you draw the shin forward towards you, there's another sensation. So you're just paying attention. We've got about one to two more breath cycles here. Awesome, sauce. The end of your next exhalation, let's gently release. Drawing the feet down to the floor. And this will sound strange, but it's doable. Let's go ahead and see if we can reach our arms up and over our head. Okay, so we've all got room. And then exhale, bring your hands back down. Okay, so we're gonna try this. This is gonna sound super weird, but you're gonna do this. As you inhale, your arms reach up and overhead, your knees fall to the right. As you exhale, the knees come back through center, the hands come back to start. Great, we got four of those. So you're gonna go each side. And you'll notice that because the arms have a longer, 
place or distance to travel, they have to move a little bit faster than your legs. And so this is like sneaky core work as Erica would call it because you have to move very deliberately in the lower body so everything arrives at the same time. Yay, and so we're gonna do four sets total. Sorry, that wasn't clear. So the exhale slowly tones the low belly and draws the legs back to center. Yeah, buddy. Yep. It felt like a nice little stretch to me as I was trying to also coordinate my brain with doing all this. So you're just noticing how it feels, moving very slowly. So arms and knees start back at the same spot and arrive there at the same time. Awesome sauce. I think most of us have about one more set. So once you've completed your set, just come back to center before I have us go on. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. Let the knees go to the right. Cool, from here, you might cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. You might grab your left hand with your right wrist. You might pull that whole left side body up and away as that right foot presses down on the top of your left thigh. And you just find a nice gentle stretch here, tailbone lengthening down and forward to that left knee. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're seeing what this feels like, where you can soften tension around the jaw and the face. Awesome sauce. Go ahead and release the hands, release the leg and inhale, come back through center. Okay, and then we'll try all that on the other side. So arms up and overhead as you breathe in. Exhale, the legs fall over to the left. You'll cross the left leg on top. You might grab the right hand, reach up through the right arm, and then just find a nice stretch on the lateral side body on the right. And you're just pausing and you're breathing and you're noticing what this feels like. And after you've taken three total complete breath cycles here, you'll gently come out of this shape and come back through center. Great. From here, you might just go to constructive rest. So walk the feet outside of the hips, let the knees knock in. You might wrap your arms around your body and stay here. Some of you might choose to go to balasana, sorry, apanasana, wind relieving pose. But you've got three breath cycles here. Three, three steady breath cycles here. And for these last three steady breath cycles here, the impetus is to ask to plant that seed of what's needed now. And when you feel like you have a good indication of what's needed now, you'll go ahead and explore that shape or those shapes and then we'll make our way to our final resting pose. So you are free to do whatever is needed now. And trusting that the final shape that we will be making our way to is Shavasana. So if that's where you're ready to go, by all means, you can start to make your way there. Right. And as you find yourself settling into your final shapes, take the first few breath cycles here to really get comfortable. So if that means you need to adjust a little bit right to left, by all means, do that. Great. Then we're going to take the next few moments to just check in. So you're going to start at the very bottom of your body, starting with the feet. 
and there's nothing to do other than just see what's present in the toes, the soles of the feet, the tops of the feet. Notice how the ankles are doing, the calves, the shins, the knee pits and the kneecaps, the backs of the thighs, the fronts of the thighs. Become aware of the back of the pelvis, the front of the pelvis, the low back, the low belly, the low ribs, the floating ribs, the middle ribs, the front ribs, shoulder blades, the chest. Become aware of the back of the upper arms, become aware of the fronts of the upper arms, your elbows and your elbow pits, the forearms and the flesh of the forearms, the backs of the wrists, the palms, the fingertips. And drawing your awareness back up, noticing the back of the neck, the front of the throat, the back of the skull, the eyeballs, the eyelids, the forehead, and the crown. Now, as you take the next few moments here, your awareness is to just simply rest on the movement up and down the spine as the body breathes in and as the body breathes out. As the body breathes in, your awareness travels from the soles of the feet to the crown of the head. And as the body breathes out, the awareness travels back down. Every inhalation is nurturing and nourishing. Every exhale lets go of anything you no longer need. We'll continue to just feed the body, the breath, and the spirit by being present. And when it's time to come out, I'll let you know.
So turn your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. If there's any part of you that's longing to linger here, by all means, please hang out here. When you are ready to move forward, I encourage you to invite small, gentle movement into the physical form. Those in stillness stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement will gently start to make your way to one of your sides. When you're getting there as mindfully, as gently as you can. Start to roll your chest more towards the floor. Press into the top hand and start to walk your spine up to center or rather vertical. When you are vertical, I do encourage you to take the opportunity to elevate your pelvis on a block, on a blanket. In the first few breaths that you're here, the gaze might still remain closed or down towards the floor and inward. And I want you to just find a comfortable seat for you. So whatever adjustments need to be made, really take the opportunity to move around until you feel like you are comfortable. Okay. And then we'll see if we can sit tall and erect through the spine, soften the shoulders down the back. And we're just going to breathe from our belly. So you'll take a big breath in, distending the belly forward. And a big breath out, drawing the belly in. And you just got three like that, really letting the lower abdomen fill. So the request was made to do some chanting. So we're gonna do a series of rolling ohms, but just like when you sing, you wanna make sure it comes from the diaphragm, comes from the belly. So all you really have to do is just make sure you're breathing into the abdomen and breathing out from the abdomen. And rolling ohms are kind of what they sound like. You don't have to be with anybody at any point in time. You just follow your own pace to make sure it's not a complete kerfuffle. We're gonna do nine. So you'll just take a big breath in and then you'll exhale. And then when you're ready, you'll inhale and you'll exhale and sing. Oh.
Notice the vibration. Notice the pulse. Gently draw your hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Press the palms into each other, lift the sternum up towards the thumbs. Soften your chin towards your throat. To that light, to that breath, to that sound and to that presence, we bow. Namaste.